This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. Welcome to the United States and to Texas. We're on the outskirts of a city that used to be called Waterloo, but was renamed to honour its founder, Stephen F. Austin. It's a city of contrasts with high-rise buildings, city life, as well as parks and activities on the River Colorado, great live music as well. It used to be part of Mexico, and with Tex-Mex cuisine, holds a link to its past. Around about 950,000 people call this city their home, slightly smaller than the other big Texan cities like Dallas, San Antonio or Houston, but it is the capital of the state. And the capital building is in the town center, as is the University of Texas, and that has 50,000 students and 24,000 staff. But of course, the reason that we're here in Texas is to race the circuit of the Americas, five and a half kilometers of fantastically technical racing circuit, 40 cars, over 170 drivers, and I'm one of them this weekend with this fabulous Aston Martin. But of course, it's all been about getting here for the very first time. The organizers are Creventic, they've put all the hard work in, and they're excited to be here. Uh, we're happy that many teams from uh, Europe have uh, made the effort to come here for the first ever Hankook 24 Hours Quarter USA. We see also some uh, local US and Mexican teams uh, joining this race and uh, we're, we're very happy with the high number of cars that are participating in this first ever Creventic race in the United States. Drivers have come from the United States, Canada and Mexico, but also drivers from Europe, South America and Asia have turned up to compete. Uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a, a bit of a journey, so um, not, not too bad, not as bad as going to Europe or anything, but um, yeah, we you know, spent a bit of time over here and had a look around and uh, trying to join in with the locals and blend in, so. It's great, really. We are very happy to be here. Uh, this is the first time. First time actually racing outside of Europe, so uh, it's a great opportunity and uh, yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed driving the circuit yesterday. In the last couple of days, the drivers have been acquainting themselves with the track. To get to know the track, I went on the track with the rental car, on the, on the session with the rental cars. Uh, after that, the free practices started. We did some short runs, to, some qualifying runs and some long runs. The Ultra number 308 Peugeot ran into problems in the night practice. During the night practice, um, the first uh, lap was uh, calm because I was uh, warming up the, the, the car. Second lap, uh, I was uh, we, behind another car, so it was not very easy to warm up very uh, uh, much the car. And the third uh, lap, I enter in the quick part, and in the quick part, my uh, tire uh, at the back, at the right, was not in temperature, so the car, uh, I lose the car immediately. The team worked hard to have the car repaired before race start. Friday afternoon, qualifying. That was good. We, had a, we took pole position, so the best way to start. It was very tight with uh, the two Porsches, but uh, yeah, great. I mean, it should be tight. A mixed field of endurance racing cars. That means there are pole sitters for each of the classes. Uh, it was an interesting session. It was a longer session, and there was more traffic than we anticipated. Uh, so we had there was a red flag as well. So it didn't was not a smooth session, but we were able to find uh, some clear laps right at the end when it was getting dark. And so uh, very grateful to end up on the pole in the class. It, it was actually as we uh, yeah, hoped and expected. So it was uh, the time we expected to uh, to drive. Well, it was great actually. I mean, for me, it was. Um, I did fairly few laps. I think we did three laps or so for us. Um, I got John back in the car just to get some solid laps in. So, um, yeah, we tried to just minimize minimize wear on the car really because you know we've got a long race ahead of us and uh, it's going to be hard work. 
Almost nine o'clock Saturday morning, getting close to race start. What are the teams and drivers expecting? I think um, this race is going to be really about being careful about what curbs you hit or don't hit. The idea is, obviously, it's 14 hours today and 10 hours tomorrow. And uh, the Hunkook tires have been fantastic. We're not worried about tire degradation. We're just tr trying to stay off the curbs and keep the car in one piece. Well, of course, we want to win. That's our goal. And uh, we will see. It's a long race. Uh, of course, the car has to, be, uh, has to be in one piece on the end. And all the drivers have to ma make no mistakes, as, as well as the team. And then uh, hopefully we can get a good result. It's a very long race, so it's all about getting this car through today's portion into tomorrow without any problems and then through till the end of the race. It's a very, very impressive field, very competitive, so it's all going to be down just to reeling off the laps and the car is in superb condition despite all of us drivers uh, trying to abuse it and it's ready to go and race. Well, I've raced here a lot and a lot can go wrong in turn one. You have a lot of space, but it's very slow, so uh, it's a bit tricky. People will have to, uh, yeah, to pay attention, but uh, it's going to be good. Uh, but we expect a fierce battle in the first part of uh, the 24-hour race. During the first 14 hours, it will be interesting to see how teams are adapting their uh, strategy to the split 24-hour race we are hosting here. The race director signals for the start of the race. The green flag is waved to start the formation lap. Whilst the field leaves the start grid and follow the pace car, not everybody ready in time. One of the cars still being worked on, the 303. And they weren't the only car to fail to depart spot on time. The cars are on their warm-up laps. The race is about to get underway. One minute past nine on the 11th of November and the lights are off. We're racing in the Hankook, 24 hours of quarter. It was quite hectic into turn one. Um, there's so many different lines stayed through there, kind of picked the line that I thought was best and hoped for the best. And then all through the tight bit, you kind of have to go single file. But after kind of turn 10, it's kind of spread out enough to then uh, get racing, really. The majority of teams have their most experienced driver in at the start, but some have opted for a different tactic. It's not me that I do the best lap, uh, but we decide that I take the, the start. And um, it was not easy because we have a lot of people <laughs> and uh, they are faster than me. That's why it was uh, a good experience. Uh, I stay on the track and uh, I, uh, I keep my place. That, that's why it was a good uh, start. After just seven minutes of racing, the 225 Aston Martin GT4 comes back into the pit lane with Christian Dick driving. There's a problem on the left-hand front wheel arch. The number 31 Rothko and the Hoffer number one both fighting for the A6 Pro class. Same type of battle at the head of the field. Jerome Bleakermolen in the Black Falcon number three goes past the SP2 class BMW of GR Motorsport. But Dennis Olsen in the number 13 uses the momentum to pass the three and becomes the overall leader. The 114 of GR Motorsport ran into difficulties and needed some expert assistance from their team. The shifting of the gearbox stopped. It was an electronic problem. So we had to uh, stop the car, put it in the, gar the garage. It took us uh, six to seven laps to fix the problem, and then we were capable of going out again. Even though it's still early in the race, there are a number of cars that have had technical issues. VDS Racing Adventures, the 58, has come to a standstill on the track. So has the 303 of Red Camel Jordan. We had a problem with the engine, and uh, we had to come in. We lost one hour. There was a cable melted, and uh, this gave some, uh, some disconnection between the engine and the ECU. Uh, yeah, the engine cut off, and I think we lost around one and a half hour. I mean, I feel that's a shame, really a shame. Competition is gone, uh, and I hope to be 24 hours in competition with Red Camel. You don't wish uh, anyone to have a technical failure. The 78 has a different type of problem. I caught a bit of dirt on the tires, and uh, you know, I was, I think, a bit too uh, aggressive. Coming out of the turn on the accelerator, uh, creating oversteer, spun the car around, so I was rolling backwards, and I thought, okay, Let's see which way do I go. Turn the steering wheel and it swung the nose back forward. Crew of the 84 ready for a pit stop, but Indy John, she's not able to reach the pit lane. The car has run out of fuel. The marshals will recover the car for the team to push to the fuel station. Whilst that was happening, a code 60 is called. The code 60 is for the number 40, which has crashed in code 8. No one's hurt. The Brook Speed Porsche is the first retirement. Our second driver had a crash. 
and the car is uh, not going to be able to make the race. I didn't get a chance to drive yet. I was a third driver. Porsche number 911 is slow on track, and they were fighting for the lead. I tried to overtake someone short before turn 19, and then I decided uh, not to overtake him, and in that moment the car spun. Yeah. Uh, in the end was that I couldn't start the engine. Paul Lafargue in the 17 tries to use this to gain a position back and drives over the kerbs. Now that's not great for the longevity of the car as William Phillips in the 225 found out. Uh, ran the kerb, just a big bang on the front right and uh, just lost all left hand steering. Um, so we're not too sure what it is at the minute, uh, but the guys are on it and uh, looking at it and I'm sure they have it sorted in no time. Four hours down and 20 to go. Let's hear what the drivers think of the early part of the race. It was awesome. <laughs> and it, I, oh, it was wonderful. It was my first time on track on, you know, like this, an endurance race. So I, I, I was instructed just to plod along about a second under my own pace, nice and consistent, look after the car, keep off the curbs. And that's what I did. And I, yeah, I think I did a good job. And here's how it stands after four hours. The Black Falcon number three is back in the lead. And they've got a lap advantage over the rest of the top five. Second, the 911 Porsche 991 of Herbert Motorsport. Third overall is the Mercedes number 31 of Rothko Racing. In the 991 class, Pro Sport Performance number 85 is leading. One lap down, second in class is APO Sport, the 80 car. And the number 111 of Track Club team is in third position. Far bigger margins in the A2 class. 87 laps completed for the leaders. 171 team Ava Solo. Five laps further back, it's the 183 Honda and their sister car, the 184, 73 laps in third position. Can you believe it? Four hours already down here at the circuit of the Americas in this handcuffed 24 hours of Austin. Still 20 hours of racing to go, plenty of stories still to be told. First time in the USA and first time at Cota for the FIA approved 24-hour series powered by Hankook. The circuit of the Americas is a very modern track. Just two weeks ago, hosted the Formula One Grand Prix of the United States. And uh, we are very happy to be here at uh, such a high quality facility with uh, high standards. This is one of the most technical tracks I've ever driven. There's 20 corners that give you an opportunity to throw your lap away. Uh, from braking to handling to transition, it's a very challenging track from an engineering standpoint to get the car right and from a driver's standpoint to assemble the lap. It's definitely a driver's track. Um, as soon as you get into the rhythm and the flow, oh, it's, it's amazing, it's so rewarding. But as soon as you make one little mistake, it just carries for the rest of the track. It's an absolute glorious feeling. Very technical track, uh, but a track that actually makes a lot of sense. The more laps you do on it, the more sense it makes. So we've got plenty of time to get it all right. You've got to get it absolutely right. In a lot of places, it's very, very, very technical. So um, the facility is second to none and the people are extremely welcoming. So I think this will count uh, amongst my favorite tracks. Over the last couple of years, the partnership between organizers Creventic and the circuit has been built and resulted in this first race in the United States. The circuit of the Americas has approached us. Um, uh, usually it works the other way around, but this time they approached us and uh, they even sent a representative to our race in uh, Dubai this year. So I made the trip out and I was uh, quite impressed by uh, what I've seen and uh, I saw that there was a great potential for Circuit of the America to host its uh, very first 24-hour race. So uh, 2017 was the, our fifth year uh, anniversary and uh, this was the very first race that was uh, hosted as a 24-hour race at Circuit of the America this year. We're happy to make a step towards the American endurance racing market as it's a completely new territory for us, an exciting challenge in, uh, in uh, meeting new teams, uh, seeing new faces and, and uh, establishing uh, something great here. The track is fantastic, the event is magnificent, even if I do say so myself, and I do. It's magnificent, what a great event, what a great pit lane, everybody's so friendly, even out on the track, everybody is very, very courteous. Bear in mind, I don't race very much, so I hope I didn't hold too many people up there. We went out in the lead, we caught the Code 60 just nightly, nicely because we came in just before the Code 60 so we could get full fuel. The Hankook tyres were pretty good. I didn't touch the car, it's perfectly balanced. Another Code 60, 
meaning no car is allowed to drive any faster than 60 kilometers an hour. This allows the marshals to go instantly to the assistance of Rob Rapange in the crashed NK KP Seat. I braked into the uh, on the straight, and there was a black Mercedes in front of me, and it didn't have any braking lights. So I, I braked and I. I slid through and he went on the side and went into his door. And problems for the number one Mercedes of Hoffa Racing. In uh, turn one, the car, the rear end snapped and the car went, went straight into the wall. Luckily, uh, Kenneth is not hurt, so everything is fine. We are retiring. The car repair would be too long, so we wouldn't make the 60% we have to do. It would be all the night, 10 laps penalty, and uh, probably parts of the chassis is broken. The number 18 of V8 Racing, also with problems. All of a sudden I was before turn 15 and I turned in. I thought I was going to lose a wheel. And then we found out that the wishbone was broken, so we had to change it. Uh, and normally to change the wishbone is a simple job, but it also uh, damaged the drive shaft. So we also had to change the drive shafts. And then in the end it took us 23 minutes. Gearbox was kind of, it was, it was going between gears and it, it, it wouldn't engage in gear and then it would pop out of a gear in mid-corner and, and, and when you hit the brakes it would pop out of a gear so you could tell there was a problem with the differential um, and the gears as a result were grinding and grinding and grinding until eventually they just ground so much it was like cheese and it was over. A6 Pro driver Paul Lafargue and the 991 class driver Andrew Gordon Colbrook take different lines and collide at turn 12. Judging by his hand movement, Paul in the number 17 seems angry and is in danger of losing his third place overall. The Windward Racing HTP Motorsport AMG Mercedes is released after a pit stop, but it was an unsafe release. <laughs> I don't know, so in, we maybe did a normal pit stop. Uh, we changed the driver, I was sitting in the car, and uh, I left the box like usual under the pit, the pit, under the pit country, and then I touched the tire, the, the front right, and the tire flew away, so it's a shame because we got a penalty for that. And the same could be said for the technical issues with the 225 Aston Martin. They've got another one. Last corner, the engine just died. Cut. Uh, so third gear, no power. Just uh, came to a halt. I uh, got it restarted. Complete lap, no issues. Same corner, engine died. So we brought it back in the pits, and on the pit entry, the engine died again. Total pedal had failed. There's always action out there. Mercedes and Porsche fighting for the lead. Up to La Faisa is very fast and um, the, the Porsche is a little bit faster out of the corners and the Mercedes is a little bit faster on the straight and so we have to, to catch our opportunities and to find the place where we can pass each other. And it's getting darker. It's the best part when the night is coming down because you have all the marks from the day and you can keep it when the darkness is coming so it's easy to, to, to enter in the night like this. Six o'clock on Saturday evening, let's take a look at the standings. Nine hours of racing completed and it's the number 911 Porsche who leads overall. Black Falcon, the pole sitter and early race leader, now 55 seconds behind in second. Third position, three laps further back, Rothko Racing. In Cup 1 class for BMW M235i's, the 154 of QSR Racing Skill has a lap in hand over the 158 of Classic BMW, their first and second. Two laps further back, the second QSR entry, the number 161. In SP2, there's a 26 lap difference between first and last in class, although the two marked cars Mazdas are only two laps apart, with the 210 leading the 214 second, Black Falcon is the third place car. Most of the Creventnik organised races are held in Europe, so coming to the US for this 24 hour endurance needed quite a lot of planning. It, it uh, has been a logistical challenge for us to get cars from Europe here, to get our material here, as we're also going on to Dubai after this race. The logistics weren't too hard for the teams. Yeah, Creventic took care of all of that inside of the entry fee for us. Um, so literally it was take the cars to, to, to meet a container, car and all the spares, load them all up, get it all shipped out. Very, very painless exercise. We just meet the container here, get it unloaded, get the garage set up. Very, very slick, no problems at all. But it does take a couple of weeks for the car to get to the US and then a couple of weeks more to get it back. That does mean planning your resources, particularly if your team has more than one car to service. Yeah, we have to divide our, our tools a little bit because we still have races in Europe. So we prepare two toolboxes for here. The most important things to, to lift the car, to take the wheels off. And then uh, we put it in a small truck 
and went to Antwerp to put it in a container. Kravetnik don't just help teams with their race car transportation, but also merchandising units and the needs of sponsors and partners. They take care of everything, about the tooling, about the products, about the tent, about everything. So when we arrive in the track, the products are there. The Hankook tyres have come to Texas directly from their factory in Korea, but the associated equipment was included with the Kravetnik shipments. The facility comes from Germany, like always, it's one container with equipment, which was also in time, this was handled by Kreventik, which is very well organized. They know how to manage this kind of business. And tomorrow, all the tire leave America, and they go straight away to Dubai. TV production partners O221 Media not only had a shared container for their shipment, but also had items flown in. The pallets for the ship we delivered to um, Koreuther because we shared one container with Koreuther. And the pallets for the airplane, Kreventik um, picked them up at our uh, office. It's this attention to detail and professionalism shown by Kreventik that allows all different types of teams to compete in the 24-hour series powered by Hankook. The 71 BMW in the pit lane for a gearbox change. This car has a very experienced driving lineup, but there's experience, and then there's Jim Briodi. My first one was in 1981. Uh, my co-driver was Danny Sullivan, who just had done Formula One, and then in 1985 he won the Indy 500. And then in, 19, in 1985, we had Janet Guthrie, who was our co-driver, when I was the factory Peugeot team in the U.S. Jim is being coached and managed by his wife, Pat. She's been involved with his racing for a long time. Back when we ran the Trans Am series, I was his engine builder. I can build a 650 horsepower small block Chevy. Isn't that what every girl needs to know? Have they set themselves a target for this race? I just want to get on the podium. And once we do that, then I'll have 50 podiums out of 90 races. So that's a world record. The number two Mercedes AMG has been recovering after a collision in free practice, but the repairs were done perfectly. And the only thing that Saad El Faisal has to worry about now it's the weight difference after getting fuel halfway through his double stint. It was very hard. The car is uh, quite heavy with uh, fuel, so uh, the second stint uh, and the double stint was, uh, was really tough. It was uh, very competitive. Our class is quite competitive, uh, the SP2, uh, but uh, thankfully we made it to second place. The number 20 Aston Martin fitted with powerful additional lights on the car perhaps too powerful. We had to take the main light bar out due to the fact that it was causing a surge, which was causing the, the electrical system to shut down. After spending nearly four hours in the garage, the number 71 BMW is heading back onto the track. Due to our good engineers and mechanics, uh, we had a, yeah, a, a, a gearbox change, which uh, didn't really fit, but we made it fit and um, it's running fine now. The 31 Mercedes of Rothko and the 80 APO Sport Porsche picking their way through the TCR class traffic and all done safely. The 158 Classic BMW making up for lost time after a broken shock absorber. Um, hopefully we can uh, pull off a win here at the end, but it's a long ways to go still, so we'll keep trying and try to get our laps back. We lost a couple laps early. Damage to the 80 Porsche. Uh, running around on the tri triple right-hander by turn 18. And the lead car, 911, came in the inside and clipped me and sent me spinning and I went into the barrier. The car in the garage for nearly half an hour, but the team spirit was not broken. Driving here is fantastic. It's very hard circuit and you really have to concentrate. It's a really good circuit. Uh, we don't really have much of an endurance series in the United States. So it's nice that they came over from Europe to have the guys race at a, you know, a good one. And while some teams have lost time due to repairs, others have issues, but have opted to keep on going. It's the fuel uh, pressure that falls away sometimes. And uh, yeah, actually they have to repair it, but there's no time for that. As we approach the end of the first day of racing, the track action is still fast and furious. There was a lot of action, especially during the night, you know, with, with us being in a GT3 car and so much faster than a lot of the of the slower cars, there are a lot of hairy moments because they don't see us coming up that fast. So you always got to watch out and play with each other. 
We're uh, very pleased with how it's going at the moment. Uh, we're P1 in the class. We're very uh, happy with our position overall and uh, the car's still running really good. So we're, we're feeling very happy with it. Long way to go yet though, so we're not celebrating yet. Race has been pretty interesting for us. We uh, led early, broke a spark plug, got to come in, do repairs, went back out. Uh, we're almost ready to regain the lead and had a right front shot break. And uh, the, brought it in, the crew changed it in lightning speed and also did a front brake change. On the way out, unfortunately, our number one competitor. Motorsport is dangerous even if you're only doing interviews in the pit lane. The 85 Proto Porsche was sent out by the team whilst others were passing them in the pit lane. Luckily, no one was hurt. It's the last couple of minutes before the end of this first portion of the race. The cars will be in Parc Fermé overnight until the restart tomorrow, so the teams set up their tactics for the restart tomorrow. We hope to stay on the same lap uh, together with uh, the golf car and then uh, so we can fight for the, for the position uh, tomorrow. But uh, I think uh, third position is a realistic uh, position for us. The race leading 911 Porsche has not had its brake pads changed yet. For sure we're gambling for a code 60, but we have enough time. We're, we're not in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the pace that we have to, to wait one hour. We, we can wait two hours or three hours, so I think it's possible. So far, so good for the number two Mercedes. But in the last minutes of the first part of the race, they have problems getting out of the pit lane. We had, a, we had an issue, so the car developed a slight misfire that got worse every lap, up until the point that we had to retire the car. So we tried everything, but uh, we could not make the car work again. Elmer Grimm is setting his hopes high for the finish tomorrow after the full 24 hours of racing. I hope we will win now the first time. We work 2017 uh, for this uh, podium and I hope we get it. The flag is out, the race is paused until tomorrow morning. All the cars are parked up on the main street and can't be touched. So after the first day of racing, here's how it stands. We're just over halfway and the 911 Porsche has just a single lap lead over the number three Black Falcon. The Rothko number three Mercedes is three laps further back in third. Still 10 hours of racing to go, of course. In the TCR class, the two team Ultram Peugeots have a more comfortable lead. The 308 has completed 320 laps. The sister car is second on 309 laps. The two Seats have had problems. The NKPP number 25 stands third at the moment. In the SP3 GT4 class, Brookspeed number 41 Porsche leads by 12 laps. From the Aston Martin Lagonda Vantage, the 232 car in second, the 118 of GR Motorsport is third. A hectic first part of the race. It's now time for everyone, teams, drivers and the press to take a breath before we restart on Sunday morning. Sunday morning and the cars have been waiting on the start straight overnight but now their drivers are returning for the second part of the Hankook 24 hours of Cota USA. On the front of the grid, Robert Renauer in the 911 Porsche. Could be a difficult race because we don't uh, know how the weather changed today. So the forecast was a little bit of rain maybe in the afternoon. Well, we will see, um, yeah. Have it, have it pisses down, you know, I'm from from London and used to the rain and uh, this car's fantastic in the rain but I don't think it will. Um, I think it's going to be dry all day but we can hope. Expedition regarding the weather is to stay like this, uh, wet but uh, with a dry uh, tarmac. Uh, if it rains it'll help us out a lot but um, we'll see how it goes. It's looked like it's going to rain pretty much every day and it hasn't so. We had a gearbox issue last night, uh, an hour and a half from the finish so we had to take a 10 lap penalty, swap the gearbox over during the night. Um, so we've gone from P3 to P6. There is a car in the pit lane. It's had work done overnight. Because we worked on the car overnight, um, we weren't allowed to join the grid this morning. Uh, so we're going to start from pit lane and join the back of the grid after the uh, safety car laps. What can we expect for the second day of the race? I'm not so experienced with rolling starts, but hopefully I can make something good and uh, get in front of the Mercedes again. We are now uh, starting fourth on the grid, but uh, we will be third, nine laps ahead of him. We did one, two yesterday, but we still have 10 hours to go. So the, the memento of the race will be quick, but not too fast, because we have a 13 laps gap between competition now. 
The cars are on their warm-up lap. It's been a great event so far for the organizers, Kravendik. Well, coming to the US is, is a big step for Kravendik. It's the third continent we are hosting a race on this season. Our very first time in America. We are very proud uh, of what we have achieved and we're happy that we're allowed to host the race here. Second warm-up lap and the field are closing up so there are no gaps when the restart happens. Uh, but there is a gap. The 184 Honda Civic has stopped at the S's. 8 o'clock Sunday morning, time to start part two of the Hankook 24 hours of Kota. The lights are out and the field climbs up towards the first corner. No changes at the top, the 911 Porsche keeping its lead. The number three close in second place, the 31 Mercedes third. Don't forget though, the lap differences from yesterday have been carried forward. So the Black Falcon number three has to make up a whole lap before it can contest for the lead. The 184 Honda still stuck out on track. We were doing just a zigzag to warm up the tires and um, I tried to full throttle and I started to realize the car wouldn't go and then it was going into limp mode and it would only allow me to rev to 2000 and RPM and the car was really, really slow. So I had to essentially get out of the way of all the faster cars. You know, I was um, fortunate to be able to make it through and got back to the pit without issues. When the uh, lights went green at the start of the race, I, um, I left the pit lane. I got to about 55 kilometers and the car just shut off halfway up the hill. So I had to roll back down into the pit lane and the, the boys had to push me back into the garage. Devastating really, because uh, you know everyone worked on the car overnight. They worked straight through the night until this morning. Uh, we thought we'd found the issue, but clearly not. So plenty of cars coming in during the early laps of part two. Some for a new set of tires, but those who went long on fuel yesterday need petrol. And the race leader is one of the early pit stoppers. There's just a lap between the 911 Porsche and the number three in second, so they've decided to change their tyres now, but they haven't changed the brake pads yet. As a result, they hold on to the overall lead. Close call for the number 83, but it's the sister 184 car who was a bit too adventurous. So obviously, between the drivers, we start talking and we're talking about where you can gain a little time and this and that. So I started to get adventurous, start trying different things and watching the BMW guys just lightly tap the brake and fly through there. I'm like, oh, let's try that. And I got a little too aggressive and then, you know, uh, scared myself a little bit. More needed to keep their nose pointing in the right direction. Uh, yeah, uh, I had a spin. I was actually behind that one. <laughs> So I was behind the Aston Martin and um, yeah, came in. I think I lost some traction on the front uh, going into the area of the, of the Aston and uh, just lost it. So, well. Some teams have changed their tactics to do longer stints. So perhaps the race is not as hard as they expected. It went very well. I was able to keep pretty consistent to the minimum time that we we're allowed to do in the in the AM class um, and handed the car over in P3 in class to Mark but unfortunately he's now in the car with the current problems. The number 33 car collection Audi stopped on track major issues for the car. Well I, I had a little problem on the on the back straight the car didn't have any more power so I, I kept going as far as I could then I pulled over I wanted to do a reset of the cars because sometimes they can have problems with fuel pressure the second I did the reset, I had flames coming out of the back, and uh, it was probably the fastest I've ever got out of a car. The marshals very quickly on the scene. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I did not even uh, uh, set the in-car uh, fire extinguisher on because that makes a whole lot of mess. They were, they were there very quickly and got the fire out. Full course code 60 has been called exactly what the leading 911 Porsche was hoping for. The time management of doing the brake change, we we have the chance we had the chance to do it uh, in the in the code 60. Uh, the other the other teams have to do it uh, under normal conditions, and so we gain a lot of time. It was very fine. The car is driving very well. The conditions are fine. Not a lot of car. Not too hot. Everything is fine. Green flag waved again. The cars are racing again. Almost 17 hours completed, and the 183 is into the pits. We're going to do brake pads. This is our last brake pad change scheduled. We knew we were going to do this. And uh, just going to keep turning laps. Just keep chugging along. Our goal is to finish. Right now, we're on, we're on pace. Let's see how they stand after three hours on Sunday here in Texas. The 
Yeah. Number 911 Herbert Motorsport Porsche, now with new brake pads, remember, has increased its lead. It's three laps now over the number three car, Black Falcon, in second. Third overall, another three laps down, the Manti Racing, number 13. In fifth overall, the number 34 Audi of Car Collection Motorsport. That puts them in the lead of the A6 AM class. They have a nine-lap lead over the V8 Chevy Corvette, number 18. The Aston Martin Vantage, number 20 of Della Torre Racing, is in third. In the 991 class, the Pro Sport 85 has an impressive lead. After 17 hours of racing, positions two and three are less than 90 seconds apart. Freem USA, number 52nd, Slide Sports in third. This endurance event at Kota is the first 24-hour series powered by Hankook Race to be run on US soil. And as such, the rules and regulations differ to what many American competitors are used to. There's a difference between American and European endurance racing. So basically what we're doing is hosting a European race and bringing the European-style endurance racing to America. For American teams, that might seem a little strange in the beginning. But uh, talking with the new teams, uh, with American teams, you can see their great enthusiasm about this race. Uh, they've all confirmed they want to come back next year. And uh, we hope they bring some fans too. Uh, the biggest difference between the 24-hour series and uh, like World Challenge of US races are the uh, Code 60. Uh, usually we have the yellow, full course yellow where the group gets to uh, close up and everything and you can gain some time back if you lose some time. But here, the Code 60, everybody has to go 60 kilometers an hour and nobody can gain on each other. I like it. I quite like it because I think that uh, when the safety car comes out, it takes too much time and you know the Code 60 is a good thing and the drivers respect it and I think it works nicely. Uh, the Code 60 rules in terms of safety, in terms of f whether it is for the driver or for the crew that are working out there, um, it is uh, quite something uh, interesting for us that we would like to implement. And it's not just Code 60 that's new to the North American teams. If you look at uh, refueling, for instance, um, in America, uh, it's uh, standard to refuel with fueling rigs in the pit lane with the, with the ATL fast uh, connect system. Uh, well, we say it's safer to refuel outside of the pit lane in a dedicated refueling area. I think it's much safer. Uh, no, no big problem, no big, big, big issues with that. The main appealing thing is the refueling part, that you don't have to invest in, in a big uh, refueling rig and everything like that. So it's a really good series to be involved with. And we have some potential sponsors here that are looking at, you know, helping us expand our, our program to do this next year. We've just started the 18th hour of racing, but the number 20 Aston of Della Torre Racing is in trouble at the start of the hour. It's been a little bit of a tough 24 hours for us, uh, a couple of issues here and there, but generally the car's been very quick. Uh, it's just unfortunate that now we've got a problem um, that's costing us a lot of time. When the rear axle is pointing in the racing direction, something's not gone the way it was planned. Oh, I was a little bit too fast and I stepped a little bit too early on the, on the pedal and so the, the ash was coming. <laughs> so on. Jim Briotti in the 71 BMW has a spin and even though he stalled the car right on a blind corner, everyone else has missed him. If you love drifting, you'll love this from Douglas Chan. I had a bit of background in drifting but not very much. Um, this car is actually really easy to drive, so it makes the drifting and just the sliding a bit more controllable and easier. Um, it also helps us uh, get around the track a bit easier because the car is inherently a bit, a bit more uh, tail happy. The Baskut mechanics are servicing the NKKP Seat. Going to turn seven, I have no ABS anymore, it's broken. So there's the other TCR uh, Peugeot, it's on the right side, I'm on the left side. And this uh, sharp turn to the left, in comes a Porsche. Takes away my clipping point. I can only brake. Peugeot steers in, doesn't see me, I drive into him. My mistake. A temporary setback for the Seat, but for the number two Mercedes AMG GT4, their absence from the track is permanent. Uh, we found the flywheel is broken on the car, so um, we haven't got any parts for it as it's still a development car. Uh, so the team are unable to fix it, so we can't continue. Not every car out there in what can be described as mint condition. When, when uh, the leading car overtake me for I don't touch the other 991, I have a little excursion outside the track and touch a little bit the wall. And this is the reason that uh, the tire 
is uh, touched with the carrosserie and uh, some uh, smoke is there. After almost 20 hours of racing, the constant stress on the car is beginning to make its presence felt. You know, the ceiling wheel is, may not be very straight. When you brake, you can vibrate. When you accelerate, you can hear the diff a little bit. Gearbox is, I don't know, there is lots of little things, but it's a normal thing when you're driving uh, for 24 hours. The car is, uh, is, is getting a little bit tired and, uh, and it's normal. So you look after it a little bit better. You don't take too much curbing, you accelerate a little bit smoother and, and you just uh, look after the baby. Klaus Bertelsen in the 171 Peugeot of Team Eva Solo Jonsson Consulting treats us to a lovely dance on the track. The 84 Mercedes AMG GT4 of Test Team Winwood Racing HTP Motorsport has had its fair share of issues but is still in the race. We're still driving. Um, for us, it's a, it's a test, uh, so, so we need to drive. Uh, we keep on going, so uh, we repaired the car like, I think, four or five times. Uh, we also had a really long one, uh, a repair of three hours. We had to take out the whole engine, but now the car is running again. Four hours to go. Let's have a look at the standings in the Hankook 24 Hours of Kota. Still a three-lap lead for the Herbeth Motorsport 911. Second, the number three of Black Falcon. Third, the 13 of Monti Racing. And the rest of the top nine overall, A6 Am cars and a 991 class car. If we look further down to the other A6 Pro class runners, Rothko Racing currently fourth. IDEX Sport Racing, number 17, fifth in class. The number one of Hoffer Racing is a retirement, but holds sixth in the standings. In SP2, Team Mark Car Australia's number 214, there's now a two-lap lead over their sister car, the 210, and it's another marked car in third, the 58 of VDS Racing Adventures. 20 hours of racing have been completed at the circuit of the Americas, and it's the dash for the chequered flag next. For teams and the organisers, motorsport is a business that requires sponsorship to keep the wheels turning. Sponsorship is, is a very key element for us. Uh, without the help of uh, Hankook, our tyre sponsor we, we, and uh, name sponsor, we would not be able to host the race uh, anywhere in this world. Partners often have racing fuel running through their veins and they love to invite their guests to the track. Some guests from my US office are here. Hancock Inblue is Hancock Technicians and I'm really proud to tell you that I have 23 guests from New Zealand. They are coming all the way along from New Zealand to here to see how we are acting here because it's the first time that they have the chance to see such a big event and these are all petrol heads. They are crazy about motorsport, they love what we have done here so far So, and that's what we have done here in Austin. The visibility that we can provide uh, to teams by uh, uh, live broadcast via highlight shows it is very important to the teams uh, to, to have visibility for their sponsors, to generate a budget, to participate in the race after all. Uh, I rely on sponsorship, so I have uh, sponsors back home in Norway, Garage 15 and uh, Rim Secret and Service, uh, among others, uh, which helps me do well pretty much anything I do with a car. Car liveries can be used by a team or driver to promote their own company. Yeah, I have a company, Aero. We developed a paint film technology, a sustainable solution to decorating airplanes. Originally, we did the work for Boeing, and we've really spent the last six years really testing it and developing it in motorsport. And we're very, you know, we're, we're, we're used on most every top team in North America. These 24 hour races are the best format. This car has been in two crashes this week and it still looks fine because we're able to clean off the surfaces from the contact so it's a great testing ground for us and sometimes a sponsor can help the team out by giving them a place to relax we have a sponsor and they provide the tech industry and the entertainment industry with mobile trailers that are customized for their needs we're using this for our customers for a friends and family and also, more importantly, our drivers. So they have a place to go when they get done with their stint. Uh, my friend designed this and built this for the movie industry, particularly the actor Will Smith. He used to take this to his movie shoots so we could have a home away from home. But Will has now graciously let us use this for our motorsports activities. The THRW Honda is supported by the factory. So the livery is promoting their Civic SI. It would be better if it was out on the track. Sadly, it's going back into the garage. Uh, this car is a 184, so our sister car 
is broken down, so it's a, it has a limp mode, unfortunately. But the guys are working hard trying to fix it. Unfortunately, the team couldn't repair the car before the end of the race. Vic Rice is loving the fact he's here with Leipert Motorsport. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm extremely happy. I've been doing this for a very long time and running with three teammates that are young, early to mid-20s, kind of makes me feel young. Yesterday, only four code 60s were required. Today, only one has been called. But no accidents doesn't mean a lack of excitement for the drivers. Uh, I had a bit of a rush of blood to the head. I was following a GT3 car and I forgot he had a lot more aero than me. And it, bah, and it just spun. Uh, it's one of them things, if you spin once in 24 hours, you're doing all right, I think. So, yeah, you've got to make a mistake every now and again to keep it real. Early on in the race, the Brook Speed number 40 Porsche crashed out. Now its sister car, the 41, is having electrical problems. And the team is having a look. Uh, it just gave up. It was a, a speed sensor. So it was putting the car into the limp home mode. But um, actually, fortunately, because the other car crashed, we had a spare part. So we swapped it over and touched wood. It's, uh, it's as good as new, so uh, hopefully. The number 911 portion of Herbert Motorsport has had an incredible second half of the race. Last night, they finished with a one-lap lead. After the restart, they've never lost that lead. In fact, they've increased it. Uh, at this moment, we are leading by four laps, I think. Uh, now we have two hours and 15 to go, and hopefully uh, we can stay in front until the end. The driving force behind series organizers Kravendik were and still are endurance racers. This is undoubtedly one of the reasons why these events deliver driving enjoyment. And the drivers are certainly enjoying this race. Yeah, we, it's the first event where we've all worked together and it, it's gone all right. We, uh, we, we expect to be back next season and, uh, and hopefully going for class win rather than uh, coming in third. But yeah, we've had a great time. Uh, it was, it's excitement from green flag and hopefully for, to the checker flag. I mean, we know we worked so hard and we're keeping it till the end. We're heading towards the checkered flag. The 125 is calling on its pit crew. I think there's uh, the inner, inner wheel uh, within the wheel on the left side or something is lo loose. I don't know exactly. So he's going out in, uh, I hope, in one minute. I hope even before six o'clock. <laughs> this close to the finish, you do not want issues. Uh, you know what? We're just being incredibly conservative right now. Uh, there's a lot of different cars with various issues right now, and the drivers are doing the best they can to keep them on the track. So I was just trying to avoid everybody else and uh, keep our pace, which we did just fine. The regulations of the 24-hour series powered by Hankook allow you to take home your BRM Chronographs trophy even if your car is in the garage when the flag falls. The amount of laps completed determines your position, not if your issues were at the beginning or the end of the race. However, teams don't want to finish in the pit lane. As the chequered flag approaches, looking at the class standings, Team Ultron now knows they will reach the podium. Whatever happens. Yes, well, I think we, we finished in first place. And, uh, and uh, in the championships uh, too. It is a very good uh, season for us. Six o'clock, Sunday evening. The race director has taken his position at the Marshals post. The number 991 Porsche of Herbert Motorsport is coming to the finish line. And Robert Renard wins the first ever Hankook 24 hours of Kota. Dennis Olsen, happy with third place. Yeah, I mean, P3 now is great. Uh, I think this is, uh, you know, what uh, the goal could be for this weekend. We are very happy about P3 and uh, I think it's great for the other guys as well. So we will take some beers in the team now and celebrate. Lucas Stoltz wanted to be on that top step of the podium. We pushed hard. I think the drivers did a really good job. Uh, yeah, next time we come back stronger. Still happy with P2. It was Robert Renard who drove the last stint in the Porsche number 911. The car had the lead at the start of the second leg today and never gave it away. Uh, the last stint was really easy, really cool. Um, we just had to bring the car home with um, three um, laps in front of the P2. So, as I said, really easy. Um, now I'm really happy what I finish uh, of the season. Pah. Winning Dubai, winning Red Bull Ring, winning, I don't know, for a car, and now here in Kota, it's unbelievable. So let's have a look at who'll be collecting the BRM Chronograph trophies after 24 hours of racing, including the class winners.
Here's the confirmation of the overall top three after 24 hours. Winning the inaugural 24 hours of quarter is the number 911 Porsche of Herbert Motorsport. Team Black Falcon second with the number three Mercedes. Third overall, another Porsche, the 13 of Monti Racing. In the classes, Herbert Motorsport of course wins the A6 Pro class. In A6 Am, it's car collection number 34 with their Audi who take home the trophy. The 991 class is won by the Porsche number 85 of Pro Sport Performance. Mark Cars Australia in the Mazda number 214 take SP2. Brookspeed International Motorsport, the number 41 Porsche takes the SP3 GT4 class. It's the French team of Ultran Peugeot in the 308 that takes TCR class victory. The All-American Team Classic BMW in the number 158 takes the Cup 1 class. And heading back to Denmark with their trophies, Team Eversolo Jonsson Consulting with the A2 win in their Peugeot number 171. Rona, USA! See you in the the first ever Hankook 24 hours of quarter is over and according to the management at the Circuit of the Americas, it's been a success. The end result is uh, very impressive. Um, the staff, the team, uh, everybody at Creventic, uh, I think that the comments are only positive. I've been watching the race for the past two days and I hear the comment of Australian drivers, German drivers, European drivers and everybody seems to be in love with our facility. So as the final bubbles from the champagne are sprayed all over the last podium here at the 24 hours of quarter, we also say farewell to the 2017 season and it's been an absolute cracker. What a great first event for this 24 hour race at the Circuit of Americas in Austin. Lots of stories to be told. Let's remind you of some of them. That was the final event of the 2017 season. And as I raced it, I've been given carte blanche to have a personal look back. The layout of the Circuit of the Americas has provided a brilliant challenge, whether you're a novice like me or one of the pro drivers at the front of the field in a GT3 car. I came to this event as a novice driver at this level of racing. I leave with more experience, plenty of racing stories and a big smile on my face. The track itself is mechanically demanding for the cars and physically demanding for the drivers. The racing was hard fought but respectful and I think everyone, including me, will go away with an overriding memory of just having a good time. Finishing second in class didn't hurt either. The 2018 Creventic season starts for touring cars, GTs and prototypes next January in Dubai. And for more information, go to 24hseries.com.